All right, guys, let's dive right into it here. I'm working on a 2018 Gen 4 850 with the 154 track. But when we're talking T-Motion, we're talking all Skidoo platforms. And in this instance, we're talking the Gen 4 series. So I've already got the track ripped out, or excuse me, the skid worked out. And let me take a look at what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to just hop into my captain's chair. Number one, the last three seasons, I've been running the Zebros lockout kit. Now, I haven't been too impressed with the way it's working, and now I'm going to research if it's installed incorrectly, because this was according to instructions, basically the only way I see to mount it, but how much wobble... There we go. With the Zebros lockout. Now, why it's wobbling that much, I gotta say, I don't know. But the Zebros kit obviously didn't work well for me. So that led me to what I've got going on now. And a friend gave me this setup. So I've been doing a lot of research and the best I could tell is this bottom triangle brace is out of the older skidoos. So they just welded everything in, welded these triangle braces to solidify your pivot point. But the question I have today, going forward, that I can't get online is, as you can tell, we're basically four inches to the center line of the bolt right there. Okay. And when I move over to the stock Gen 4, we're at three and three quarter. Now you like to say that quarter inch isn't gonna matter in the world of us. What's a quarter inch? But does the quarter inch, which raises it here, push your mounting points and the geometry up in the skid where it puts just enough of a bind on something? I don't know. We're gonna find out when I go to mount this thing. So I haven't been able to get answers by ever th this. Setup has been done by a lot of folks, and I don't know if they dealt with that measure difference or if they just put it in and nobody noticed. That's the answer I want to get before I slap it in the skid. So today I'm just I for three days I've been trying to get that answer, and as of yet have not been able to find out what guys have dealt with. So I'm gonna be cracking the egg open on that one. Now what I also have here that I got my hands on. And this is going to be a little unique. This is a torsion delete from Kmod. Kevin out of Kmod. This is kind of a one-off kit that he built for somebody years ago. And I was able to get my hands on this thing. So I'm super interested to get this kit on the turbo. Or I might swap it under the 18 this year. For now, we're going to go with the welded brace. But the T-Motion Delete, I think I'm going to throw on one of the sleds just to see what kind of reaction I get out of it. Uh, I'm waiting for Kevin to send me some install paperwork so I can get it installed correctly. But for today, this is going to be what I'm going to experiment with to get rid of the T-Motion. That... I don't believe the Zebros lockout kit did. I'll be interested to hear from you guys if you had that much play with your Zebros lockout because that was a lot of swivel. So in goes the welded home fabricated. Later on, when this thing's in the sled as we go into winter, I will give some feedback on the measurements there between the bottom bar and the upper bar. And I'm interested on the install when I go to put it back up into the drop brackets there, if everything's gonna bolt right in. So, that's where we're at today. Going forward, and last but not least, something else that I think I'm gonna do here is, as most of you may or may not know, this is the bottom bar on your front swing arm, right? So, they are. there's a split in that section to allow the
the bars to pivot individually for your T-motion. So I haven't heard anybody that's do it. John Wilmer at Sledhead Racing has been helping me out with a lot of questions. He hasn't ever heard. I'm going to weld up this seam and make this a solid bar all the way across to eliminate any kind of twist uh, possibilities on the front of that swing arm. So, again, videos will be coming this winter on how this all works out. Once I get everything up under the sled, we'll be able to tell right away how she looks. Well, now that I've got her back in, I can say the install wasn't too bad. Looks like the geometry will work okay. So, there she is. All right, now that we have it in, we're going to watch as I transfer my body weight on the chassis, how it's going to affect the track. Now, in the old days, when I transferred my body weight, the track would sit on the ground and the chassis would roll with the T-motion. So let's see how it looks now. So you see the track is lifting a little bit on the edges. All right, guys, to wrap this up, as you saw me there at the end, rolling the chassis and the track moving, the end of the video was slowed down a little bit, and I think that's showing the play in the front swing arm where I showed you the joint that I still need to weld up when I put this skid back in is allowing the front swing arm to pivot just a little bit and allow that front skid to roll underneath the chassis. So next step will be to roll, to, excuse me, weld up that seam on the lower crossbar of the front swing arm and i think i'll have that skid stabilized for this season so hope this video helps you guys uh, feel free to check me out on facebook under joe gill side hill gill over on youtube at high country octane films and uh future videos coming